and welcome back everybody. We're here again today in my snake room and we're gonna show you guys the Fields Horned Viper. Now this is a viper native to the Middle East, but first we're gonna feed my baby crocodiles. Now we just went to underground reptiles. We got a couple crickets. We picked up that snake and we got some water bowls and some other supplies. So come over here, we're gonna feed the crocs. We do got some large crickets. So what we're gonna do, you guys know we've been dealing with Kodak and his teeth issues. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna add some calcium powder to these crickets. So that way this guy can get a little bit more vitamins. We're trying to put a lot of heat on him, give him a lot of calcium, everything to make him have strong bones and make his teeth grow straight in. All right, here, what we're gonna do, we're gonna give it just a little sprinkle. You don't need too much calcium powder. This stuff looks like a little bit, but it turns into a lot. So we're just gonna shake those bad boys up, get these crickets all dusted. All right. These guys, you want them to look like they just jumped in the snow. It's exactly what you want. Just like that. Beautiful. And these are large crickets, so the crocodilians are gonna love eating these guys. We're gonna go ahead and give a dozen to the caiman, and we're gonna go ahead and give another dozen to the Nile crocodile. Now these guys usually eat the crickets on their own pace. Where we're gonna go ahead and throw a couple in and see if the crocs will go right after them. Oh! Camo just took a big swipe at one. Yeah, they're just a little camera shack. Now we're gonna go over here. Like I said, these guys usually eat the crickets on their own pace. So we're gonna throw most of the crickets up here on land so that way they don't drown. And then we're gonna throw about one or two in the water and see if the non crocodile eat it. Forgot to do the feeding call. Food, food, food. Let's throw one in the water. He does look like he's hungry. Ooh, hoo, hoo. look at that. Oh, you got, you got the tongs, buddy. He's a tank. This guy loves crickets. And these dusted crickets are super, super good for him. It sounded like Camo just took a little swipe at one over there. Look at that. Let's give one more to the crocodile on camera. Come on, buddy. This crocodile is gonna grow so fast and so healthy. He's eating crickets, he's eating fish, he's eating shrimp, he's eating croc chow, he's eating pinkies. It's so important to feed your crocodiles and crocodilians a wide variety of diet. Because in the wild, they're not just eating rats, they're not just eating insects, they're not just eating fish, they're eating a mixture of everything. Now, bigger crocodiles can eat about once a week, once every month. These little guys need to eat every two to three days because they are growing. So an animal like this, you can feed them a ton. They're not really gonna build up fat. What they're gonna do is just grow faster. Let's give this guy one more. Food, food. Now you guys hear me saying the word food? That is a food command. So every time I come in here and they hear that, they know it's feeding time. But if I go inside the cage and I don't say the word food, they know it's not time to eat. Uh oh, <laughs> he's chasing him. So cool, so, so cool. Now we still haven't found a name for the Nile Crocodile. So if you guys have a good one, comment it down below. We'll name this croc after it. Now you guys did comment Penny for the Copperhead. And let me tell you what, Penny is an awesome name. So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna name the Copperhead Penny. I absolutely love it. Once we throw a bunch of crickets in here, they're live creatures. So what they're doing, they're running around. This crocodile is gonna be forced to actually get out of the water and hunt for these little guys. Not only are these crickets food, but they're also enrichment for the crocodilian. Let's go unbox the snake. Check out Tika, the Indian Cobra. Such an intelligent snake. She's super, super cage aggressive. So when I'm outside of the cage, she loves to hood up. But once I take her out, she doesn't really hood up. Now that I don't like so much, but it is good when it comes to danger. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. That's crazy. I love this snake. Tika, the Indian Cobra. So awesome. All right, let's get into it. We just went to Underground Reptile. These guys went ahead, they double bagged the snake for me. I bring my own snake box, they threw it in there. So I actually haven't even laid eyes on this snake. I bought it online, bought it over the phone. So I'm gonna get to look at this snake for the first time as well as you guys. Now in the state of Florida, when you transport a venomous snake, you need to have it inside of two pillowcases as well as a snake proof box, which is something like this. It's basically just a wooden box with a lock and some holes on the back. And it has to say venomous snake transport container or venomous snakes inside, something along those lines. I don't really have to worry about opening this with a snake hook because I know she's in the bag. Now, a lot of people actually get bit through the bag. You can see there's a zip tie on this bag. So I might as well use that zip tie 
for an extra safety precaution. Now I actually haven't decided, I don't know whether I'm gonna put this snake in this vision cage, one of these black ones Tyler gave me, or in a band, it all depends on how big the snake really is because I haven't even seen it yet. So what we're gonna do, very, very cautiously, we're going to clip this zip tie off. Just like that. Now, always, always, when you're working with snakes in the bag, the first thing you want to do is lay a hook flat down. Once the hook is flat, put your foot on it and pull the bag. Now, if his head is right there in that knot, he's gonna be pushed back. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna pull this all the way back. Now, I know he's double bagged, so I actually have to lift this up and I have to get the other bag inside. Now, the other bag inside also has a zip tie. So I'm gonna pull this bag out. You wanna be very, very careful. Now, you don't wanna just grab the bottom of the bag. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use these little snips. I'm gonna pull this guy out. Now he doesn't look as big as I thought, but he's still not a hatchling. So this right now is when things become dangerous. Now I can already see there's a little bit of newspaper in there. I can see he's in the back right corner of the bag. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna press this down right on the knot. We're gonna make sure it's all the way, make sure it's all the way pushed back. So now the next thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna cut this right here. Now the snake is free. So next, what we're gonna do, now that we know he's behind the snake hook, we're gonna grab the corner of this bag. We're going to lift him right out. Now you do not wanna use your fingertips for this. You wanna use some tweezers or something like that. And we have to be ready, because he's about to come right out of this thing. I can tell his head is right there. And you wanna make sure you got your snake hook ready. Woo hoo. Look at that little guy. He's so tiny, he's so tiny. Look at him, he's like a little sidewinder the way he moves. I thought this thing was like three feet long, I'm not gonna lie. This is even cooler, I'd much rather have a baby horn viper than an adult. Now these guys are very, very closely related to the spider tail viper. That's what you see on the tip of his tail, he's got a little lure. He'll do what we call coddling. He'll move the end of his tail, mimic a bug, and then he'll come in and he'll eat his prey. Now there is a field horned viper, and there's also an Arabian horned viper. So his venom is a little bit more toxic than the Arabian horned viper. This field's horned viper actually carries neurotoxic properties inside of his venom. So instead of just being hemotoxic like most vipers, this snake has a neurotoxic venom as well. This snake right here has absolutely no anti-venom available in the entire world. So if you get bit by this snake, there is no anti-venom. Now there is polyvalent that is known to help a little bit when it comes to the hemotoxic properties, but when it comes to the neurotoxic properties, there is no anti-venom. That will help you if you get bit by this snake. He's such a cool snake. Now this little guy right here, we're gonna put him on Aspen for about one day until we get some sand. Then we're gonna build him a nice little enclosure with a sand setup and some rocks. Now since he's so tiny, we're gonna go ahead, we're actually gonna throw this guy in a tub. But before we do that, Robert, can you try to zoom in on his tail? This guy is like the poor man's spider tail viper. Look at the tip of his tail. It's literally like a little spider, like a little bug. Look at the way he moves exactly like a little sidewinder. Robert getting in that handling experience right off of work. Yee, look at my boy. Such a cool snake, it's not even funny. Robert, go ahead, pull him back just a little bit. Hook him on that first third of his body. Perfect, perfect. Look at his tail. Look how it looks like a little, little worm. That's so crazy. And he's super small. Just to give you guys a size reference, look at my shoe next to him. <laughs> now it's probably not so smart to be wearing sandals while handling venomous snakes, but hey, an absolute beauty of a horned viper. So crazy. He's like, man, your shoes stink. <laughs> Back him up a little bit. Get him away from my shoe, man. One of the coolest snakes I have ever seen. He is so cool. Now, one of the main reasons why I wanted to get this snake because he's very, very unique. Now, not everyone in the venomous snake keeper hobby in Florida has one of these guys. So I wanted to get a snake that was very unique, but also super, super cool. Fields Horned Viper. Robert, what do you think? 
like him. What do you think? Yeah, don't take your eyes off the snake. Put your eyes back on the snake, boy. I'm Put your eyes back on the snake. snake. All right, let's go ahead and do this. I want you to bring them right back there. Hold them for a couple seconds while I get one of these enclosures set up. Now, this guy's so small, we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna throw him in the bin as kind of a quarantine slash temporary setup. Give it a little sprinkle, Robert. You know the snake? All right. Give it a little fluff. Need to fluff. All right, what we're gonna do now is gonna be a very, very simple quarantine setup. Little hide right here, and also a little water bowl. Yeah, this ain't no ball python, so be careful. <laughs> So we got some fresh water for this guy. Now, speaking of water, we actually need to fill up the Copperhead's water dish, but this should be perfect for the Fields Horned Viper. This is absolute perfect little setup for this little guy. Robert, switch off. Now I thought he was literally three feet long, so. Such a crazy adaptation for an animal to literally grow scales that look like horns on top of his head. Now this snake is very, very small, and he's really not the kind of snake I like tailing. If I tail a snake, it's gonna be something at least two or three feet long. This little guy, he's only about 11 inches. He's not very, very big. So what we're gonna do, we're just gonna pick him up. There's no reason to tail this little guy. Look at that. So cool. So we're just gonna put him right here in his new enclosure. We're gonna give this guy a couple days just to relax. We're not even gonna open this tub. Let's go ahead while we're down here and take a look at the cobra. Woohoo! Our beautiful baby monocle cobra. Look at that little guy. He's so fired up. It's insane. So hot. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. You broke the glass on that stomach. When you're keeping venomous snakes, as you guys notice, we have all the common names on each enclosure. We have all the scientific names on each enclosure. And if we know the sex, we'll put the sex as well. So right here it says a 0.1, that means it's a female. If the number comes after the dot, it's a female. If the number is before the dot, it's a male. So right here, we have a female, Naja Naja, which is an Indian cobra. Now, what we gotta do, we just put this field's horn viper in this enclosure. We have to print the scientific name as well as the common name. So we're gonna do that right now. We got the label. Something like that. We'll just put that right on. Uh, look at it. What is that? Pseudocrestes. We still have to fill up the Copperhead's water dish. Let's get to that. Just like that. And I'm going to give myself a little bit of water. <laughs> That's cool. I would never give my snakes water. I wouldn't drink. Delicious. Mm. Now there's also a little piece of poop in here. So what we're going to do, we're going to pull this little guy. Well, not this little guy, Penny. We're gonna pull Penny the Copperhead right out of here and clean that little piece of poop. Such a perfect size for her. Now, I didn't think we would get so much love for this Copperhead. Now, I was saying that this guy is a super, super common species and not a lot of people like keeping them, but the fans, let me tell you what, you guys love this little guy. And I'll be honest, for a Copperhead, he has an amazing color. He's got almost a salmon pinkish color. Now, this snake right here, just like I was saying in the last video, they are not too toxic. Now the chances of dying are very, very slim, but if you have an allergic reaction or some underlying conditions, you can die from this snake. Super cool. All right, we got Penny's cage all nice and clean. Let's get her back in. This is how we do. Oof, look at the colors on her. Such a cool snake. Woohoo! Striking right at Robert. I told you guys this particular snake is no joke. If a copperhead strikes on the hook like that, they're a nasty snake. Let's go ahead and make this nice and quick. Right from the bin into her cage. Right like that. Beautiful. Ooh, you can even hear her tail. Remember guys, never close the enclosure with your bare hands. Always use a tool. Awesome. All right, boys. Locking the cell up. Mm. And that is the end of today's. And that is the end of today's. <laughs> and that is the end of today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed the Fields Horn Piper as much as I did. See you next time.